Hey now, welcome to Lone Star Mini Restoration. Today is a continuation of my cylinder head removal. As you can see here, classic mini workshop. Um, I am I am following Mr. Keith Miller, who is very good, very knowledgeable um, of these minis and of course many other things. But um, I am looking at the books. I've got the, the manuals, the engine manuals, Haynes manuals, uh, Leland manuals, um, and they basically tell you what to do. Like these are things you need to check, X, Y, Z, right? Check for cat cracks, leakage, look at the valves. They tell you what to do, but they don't tell you how to do it. So that's where Mr. Keith Miller comes in. Um, I am watching his videos. I'll probably post a picture of his episode in case you want to go see it. Um, he's very knowledgeable. Keith, if you happen to see this, thank you, sir. Uh, so today again, I am basically checking for leaks. I'll probably remove the, the uh, valve springs and the valves, and then I'll clean up the cylinder head. That's probably all I'm gonna do today. So, um, yeah, I guess that's about it. Let's crack on. Right, the cylinder head is upside down. It's fairly level as can be, um, so that it clears the springs down here. I have it spaced off with some scrap metal pieces. Uh, one and a half inch square tubing. All right, I have found a new function for my cool little workbench mini. Um, my wonderful family friends gave this to me, I don't know, a couple years ago, uh, the Cranstons in Norwich, my, my, my uh, shop mascot. Anyhow, I found a new function for it. Watch this. Remember my cool flashlight? I gave these away in my Christmas decoration. Magnet, boom. It's now my base. <laughs> so it's now my base for my magnet or my flashlight. Awesome. So what I'm going to do, it's all fairly level. I am going to uh, fill these areas, uh, the seat areas or this, these cavities with WD-40. Um, it's what I have. So it's what I'm going to use. I had to put the spark plugs back in. Um, because I take them out and there are big holes there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these areas and then my wife and I have some shopping. I'm going to leave it for a few hours and hopefully when I come back, it'll still be full. You know, I don't know where this engine has been. I don't have any history on it. So I'm not expecting much, honestly. I'm kind of expecting the worst, but this is WD-40. Um, I just put it in a, in a bottle. And so, let's see. All right, so looking down in there, looks like it's just off the lip so that I know, oh, they're all about the same. So they're just off the lip. So when I come back, um, I can look for, hopefully I won't find any leaks. Um, I will look, of course, I'll look as Keith Miller did. I'll look in the, the exhaust and the inlet ports down here to see if I can detect anything. And then I'll do the air test blowing into it and see if there's any bubbles but for now that's all I'm going to do and all right I'm gonna let some time pass and we'll come back and check on it okay so after a little over three hours um, I'm actually somewhat pleased because I actually expected all these to be you know almost down or you know way down way down and they're not they uh, there is some leaking going on However, these guys are still almost at the level that they were. Now, I'm going to take the camera around and, and look through the inlet and the exhaust ports, and, you can, and I can see the leaking. So let me, let me grab the camera and show you that. It's definitely, you can see the, the moisture. It's definitely leaking. So now I go to the inlet. Yeah, I mean, they're all leaking. They're all leaking about... Uh, they're not all leaking the same. Like, that one's dry. My gosh, what is that? That's the inlet on cylinder one. And it's, it's dry as a bone. Cylinder one looks really good. All the others are leaking. 
Let's see, what I'm going to do now is I'm, I guess I'm going to, oh, no, pressure test, right? Let's do the pressure test. I've dialed down the air on my uh, valve, you know, basically allowing uh, just a small amount of air coming through here. And let's play. Let's, uh, let's do, this is cylinder one. So let's try. Nothing on the exhaust. Cylinder one inlet. Nothing on the inlet. Cylinder two inlet. Yep, bubbles right in here. I'm gonna do cylinder one again. Yeah, no, cylinder, cylinder one's really good. Good deal. So, cylinder two, you saw air bubbles over here. Let's do exhaust on cylinder two. Kind of the same area, all, all on, on the inside of the, uh, of this radius here so but anyhow all right so now exhaust on cylinder three bubbles yep inlet cylinder three whoa holy moly well that's the one that was leaking the worst on the bottom so it looks like it's just got a it's wide open there. Look at that. Big bubbles, not just little air bubbles. Um, so that's the inlet to cylinder three. All right, cylinder four inlet. There's some there. Okay, well, so definitely cylinder two, both exhaust and inlet right in here. Uh, cylinder three, both of them. The inlet was definitely by far the worst. That was pretty bad. And then the inlet on cylinder four. All right, interesting. Okay, as I understand it, uh, even the cylinder head is cast iron. So uh, my first, I've, I've dried up all these, all the WD-40 that was in here. Well, I haven't, it's not completely dry, but I'm just going to start to clean this head a little bit. And before I take the wire brush, I'll get most of the, the gunk off. Um, and then I will take the wire brush and or my nylon brush. Actually, I'm going to try my nylon brush first just to see how that does. So here I'm trying my nylon brush. Uh, you know, I did, I used my nylon brush to remove a lot of stuff on the shell. Uh, now I'm just going to try to clean up this metal. Um, I don't know how well it would work. I know that it pushes grease around rather than removing it, but maybe this is a little bit different. So here we go.
All right, I think I'm going to wrap this episode up. I will remove the springs, the valve springs and the valves themselves on the next episode. Uh, but right now, as you saw, I've kind of cleaned off the bottom side of the cylinder head. Um, I am going to finish. Clean also, as you saw, I blew piped air into all the uh, ports and you saw like a rust colored smoke coming out. So I'm gonna to try to clean those a little bit more as best I can. I'm not sure how to properly clean them, but I'll figure something out. Um, oh, I did wanna say that seeing those big air bubbles in inlet of cylinder three may, reminded me. So I went back, I went to my YouTube channel and I went back uh, over a year ago and where I did my first pressure test. And sure enough, that's when I found the cylinder three was low. It was at 98 PSI, where the others were at um, 155 or 185. So I have a feeling that that air blowing, blowing major through there is a contributor to the low pressure. Um, I don't know. I don't know how it all kind of works, but I'm thinking that that may be a true statement. Uh, so I plan on, currently I plan on taking the valves out and lapping them. I don't know if that's going to be enough for cylinder three, the intake. Um, I don't know. I may have, I, anybody out there, if you have tips, outstanding, thank you. Um, otherwise, I'm going to have to seek some help somewhere maybe on that note. Anyhow, stay tuned. Ep the next episode coming up is where I'm going to learn how to remove the uh, valve springs and the valves themselves. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to clean this up a little bit more um, on all sides, not just the bottom. Uh, well, well, no, I've got to take the springs off to clean the top side, right? So I'll clean the bottom a little bit more and then I'll look at the others. But thank you for joining in. And as always, I'm an open book. So if you have any uh, tips, suggestions, I'm all ears. Thank you. All right. Bye just now.